Severin Serisi, a young and beautiful housewife, is unable to share physical intimacy with her husband Dr. Pierre Serisi, despite their love for each other. Her love life is restricted to elaborate fantasies involving domination, sadomasochism, and bondage. Although frustrated by his wife's frigidity toward him, he respects her wishes. While visiting a ski resort, they meet two friends, Henry Hassan and Rennie. Severin does not like Hussein's manner and the way he looks at her. Back in Paris, Severin meet up with Rani and learn that a common friend, Henriette, now works at a brothel. At her home, Severin receives roses from her son and is unsettled by the gesture. At the tennis court, she meet her son and they discuss Henriette and houses of pleasure. Hassan mentioned a high-class brothel to Severin at 11 side John D. Sommer. He also confesses his desire for her, but Severin rejects his advances. Haunted by childhood memories, including one involving a man who appeared to touch her inappropriately. Severin goes to the high-class brothel which is run by Madame Anis. That afternoon, Severin services her first client. Reluctant at first, she responds to the firm hand of Madame Anis, who named her Belle du Ju and has love with the stranger. After staying away for a week, Severin returned to the brothel and began working from 2 to 5 o'clock each day. Returning to her unsuspecting husband in the evening. One day, her son comes to visit her at home, but Severin refuses to see him. Still, she fantasizes about having love with him in her husband's presence. At the same time, Severin's physical relationship with her husband is improving, and she begins having love with him. Severin becomes involved with a young criminal Marshal, who offers her the kind of thrill and excitement of her fantasies. When Marshal becomes increasingly jealous and demanding, Severin decides to leave the brothel with Madame Anne's agreement. Severin is also concerned about her son, who has discovered her secret life at the brothel. After one of Marcel's associates follow Severin to her home, Marcel visits her and threatens to reveal her secret to her husband. Severin pleads with him to leave, which he does, referring to her husband as the obstacle. Marcel waits downstairs for Pierre to return home and shoot him three times. Marcel then flees but is shot dead by police. Severin's husband survives but is left in coma. The police are unable to find a motive for the attempted murder. Sometime later, Severin is at home taking care of Pierre, who is now paralyzed, blind and in a wheelchair. Hassan visits Pierre to tell him the truth about his wife's secret life. She does not try to stop him. After Hassan leaves, Severin returned to see Pierre crying. In an ambiguous ending, Pierre then get out of the wheelchair, pour himself a drink and discuss his holiday plan with Severin. Severin is a bored, affluent housewife. We meet her first when she is forced to dismount from a carriage. Her husband Pierre ties her to a tree, whips her, then leaves her to be loved by the two carriage driver. Severin is prone to fantasies. She is in a conventional marriage. Pierre is a handsome young surgeon. They sleep in separate bed. An older friend Henry keeps hitting on her, but she tells him to keep his compliment for himself. He is attracted by her blonde perfection, her virtue, 
and her icy disdain. Taking fantasy a stage further, Severin gets a daytime job at a high-class brothel. At first, she is prudish and want to pick her clients. Then she is shown a farmhand, which the masochistic side of her nature releases. Re-release almost 40 years after its original cinema exhibition, Belle du Jou still has the power to shock. Not through explicit scenes, it is a highly erotic work without being titillating, but by the shocking images and the superb performances that contrast the aloofness of the bourgeoisie to the practically of love, of elegance to depravity. Scenes of Severin having mud thrown at her stick in the mind, no less than the tentativeness with which she approaches the brothel for the first time, dressed in black and ready to take flight at any moment. Kutio by Yves Saint Laurent and Lars photography drown us in luxurious cheek. The stylish setting arouse our aesthetic senses and the languorous pacing and emotional complexity keep us trying to figure it all out long before we realize just how difficult that is going to be. Analyzing it in Freudian or purely low term is less than satisfying. The characters are convincing the post conservative elite. The matter of fact but certainly not cause madam, the pause who visit the brothel and the psychologically conflicted Severin through them all. It is hardly a plea for love liberation. The men, even one that Severin takes a fancy to, are pretty low life. Their strange fantasy requirement meet out the most fascinating tableau of perversion, but even more fascinating is what we don't see such as what is in the box brought by the Chinaman. We are forced to identify with Severin. She is the most normal character, and yet the most convincing way to approach the film is one suggested by Burnell himself. As a parable attacking the decadence of the bourgeoisie, on a more elevated level it is a forceful artistic statement that viewers addicted to linear storytelling may find hard to accept. It seems to anticipate eyes wise shut in its treatment of hidden romance, but cinematically it is more linked to the subtle Mulholland Drive. Bunnell's friend from university and at one point collaborator Salvador Dali could be similarly perplexing when it came to alternate realities. He said, People love mystery, and that is why they love my painting.